One of the most startling scientific discoveries from the Human Genome Project is that 250 of our 25,000 human genes have no evolutionary basis whatsoever. What that means is that 250 of our genes are not, I repeat not, shared with any other terrestrial life form. Did you know that 85% of all human beings have a monkey gene? The monkey gene is called the rhesus factor, or RH factor, because it can be traced to the rhesus monkey. Chances are your blood type tests RH positive, which means you've got the monkey gene. If by chance your blood type tests negative for the monkey gene, you are in a small minority of only 15% of the world's population. So what happens when an RH negative woman gets pregnant with an RH positive partner? Her body rejects, attacks, and kills the fetus. Unless, of course, there's medical intervention. What is the cause of this strange breeding incompatibility within the human species? Are RH negative people alien in some way? <laughs> Studies were done to see if there's any difference between RH negative people and RH positive people. The results were shocking. RH negative people commonly have a higher than average IQ, sensitive vision, a lower body temperature, increased sensitivity to heat and sunlight, they can't receive blood transfusions from RH positive donors, they often have reddish hair and blue, green, or hazel eyes. Some even have an extra vertebrae or an extra rib. Since RH negative blood hasn't followed the usual evolutionary path, it must have been introduced from some outside source. Two celebrated authors, Eric von Daniken and Zachariah Stitchin, have uncovered convincing evidence that the outside source was ancient astronauts who genetically engineered the human race. According to Van Daniken, the proof lies in the breathtaking megaliths that were developed either by extraterrestrial visitors or by humans who had been taught the advanced scientific knowledge needed to build them. Such artifacts include Stonehenge, the head statues of Easter Island, and the Egyptian pyramids and obelisks. Why did so many ancient cultures with no way of communicating with each other worship these so-called gods and illustrate them in their artwork as astronauts with space vehicles? It's easy to imagine our own astronauts someday encountering intelligent life forms in space who will view us as their gods. Many of the ancient texts talk of gods who came to Earth from the heavens and created man in their own image. The Egyptians, Phoenicians, Chaldeans, Mayans, Aztecs, Aryans, Assyrians, and the inhabitants of ancient India and Tibet have all recorded the arrival of gods from the heavens in their ancient writings. The best place to get answers about who these gods were is from the oldest known records written by the oldest known civilization, the Sumerians, whose culture dates back to 6000 BC. The Sumerians documented the arrival of gods from another world who brought with them advanced knowledge. They called these gods the Anunnaki, which means those who from heaven to earth came. In the 1800s, Sumerian clay tablets were found in present-day Iraq. The tablets clearly identify the name of the god who genetically engineered the human race. His name was Enki, and he's the same god that the Greeks called Poseidon. His symbol was two entwined serpents. The entwined serpents are the double helix of human DNA. This same symbol is used by today's medical profession. Why on earth would the Sumerians and other ancient civilizations make up the same lies about our human origins? The real question that needs answering is why the corporate religions of the world have hidden the truth from us. Zechariah Stitchin is convinced that ancient astronauts lived among the Sumerians. We look like them, says Stitchin. They made us through genetic engineering. They jumped the gun on evolution and made us look like them physically and to be like them emotionally. Stitchin goes one step further. He suggests that these gods are ancient astronauts interbred with the human females they created. The Bible's book of Genesis agrees. In Genesis 6, 1 to 4, it says, And it came to pass, when humans began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of humans were beautiful, and they chose wives, and they had children with them. What planet, galaxy, universe, or dimension did these sons of God who seeded human life on earth come from? They were 12 space-bound astronauts whose crippled ship crash-landed in the Atlantic Ocean off of Gibraltar. The astronauts found themselves cast back into the Stone Age with the daunting task of rebuilding their civilization and reinventing science. The Garden of Eden was not a mythical paradise. 
It was the fertile plain of Atlantis. The word Eden comes from a Sumerian word meaning plain. Plato described Atlantis as a flourishing civilization populated by humans, gods, and demigods. Beyond the city lay a fertile plain 330 miles long, surrounded by majestic mountains dotted with villages, lakes, rivers, and meadows. The idea that flesh and blood, walking, talking gods live side by side with ancient humans is hard to swallow for some. Why? Because for thousands of years, we've been deeply indoctrinated with the religious belief in the existence of only one invisible, all-powerful God. For the Sumerians, cohabitation with human-like gods was an everyday reality. <laughs> Greek mythology is really the disguised history of the ancient astronauts of Atlantis, who were described by the ancients as heavy, muscular, eight-foot-tall giants. They traveled at wondrous speeds and possessed immense weapons and supernatural powers. They loved, they sinned, they fought battles, and they had lifespans of thousands of years. According to the Vedas of ancient India, the gods were all members of one large, but not necessarily peaceful family. Rivalries between family members split up the gods into two warring factions, the young Olympian gods and the older generation of Titan gods. After a fierce ten-year battle, the Olympians, led by Zeus and Poseidon, overthrew the Titans. Zeus seized the throne of power, but his younger half-brother Poseidon challenged his authority. To end the conflict, Zeus and Poseidon drew lots and divided the world between them. Poseidon, the serpent god, would rule Atlantis and the Atlantic region. Zeus would rule Lemuria and the Pacific region. The story of how the gods created humans is found in the Atrahasis epic written in the 18th century BC. The epic was written on clay tablets and describes the toil of the lower gods digging canals and rebuilding a new civilization. After 3,600 years of hard labor, they threw down their tools and rebelled. The council of higher gods met and decided that a slave race would be genetically engineered to do the labor for them. Enki was the Sumerian equivalent of the Greek god Poseidon and conducted experiments with the most advanced species on Earth, apes and monkeys. The first hybrid slaves can be dated to around 200,000 BC. With further experimentation, the gods genetically engineered the Homo sapiens. For the past few decades, molecular biologists have been examining and mapping human DNA, which has 35,000 genes consisting of over 3 billion chemical bases. It turns out that 97% of our DNA is junk DNA with no known use or function. Failing any other explanation for this shocking revelation, scientists are now considering the notion that our genetic code was written by an extraterrestrial programmer who wrote two versions of our genetic code, a big code and a basic code. Our so-called junk DNA is a hidden and dormant upgrade of our basic code. It is a clever, self-organizing, auto-executing, auto-developing, and auto-correcting software. In other words, the DNA that scientists have been calling junk DNA is really divine DNA. The facts show that our genetic programmer purposely disabled the big code and left us to exist on only 3% of our DNA. Like a broken radio dial which is stuck on one station instead of roaming across thousands of stations and frequencies, humans are stuck on one station called Five Sense Reality. There are about 250 unique human genes that are not found in any lower species. In fact, scientists have not been able to find any evolutionary basis for these genes. There are about 250 unique human genes that are not found in any lower species. In fact, scientists have not been able to find any evolutionary basis for these genes. According to Plato, God Poseidon was so pleased with the human hybrids he had engineered that he mated with a chosen female named Clito and built a palace for her at the top of a hill near the center of the island. He surrounded it with rings of water and land to protect her. Clito gave birth to five sets of twin boys. Eventually, he divided Atlantis into ten districts, each ruled by one of his ten demigod sons. 
For generations, humans lived among the gods and demigods and multiplied in great numbers. They lived simple, virtuous lives as laborers, but slowly they began to change as greed, power, and sexual immorality corrupted them. To determine a suitable punishment, Zeus gathered the other. In the Sumerian accounts, the gods decreed that a flood would sweep over the cult centers and destroy the corrupt seed of humans and demigods. Poseidon was sworn to secrecy about the plan. When the gods opened the floodgate, Atlantis was a doomed paradise. 72,000 references to the flood are found in ancient writings from all over the world. Tablet 3 of the Atrahasis epic describes what happened next. In violation of his oath of secrecy, Poseidon warned Noah of the coming flood that would destroy humanity. He instructed him to dismantle his house, build a roof on it, and seal the upper and lower deck shut with bitumen. Why did Poseidon break his oath of secrecy and warn Noah? According to Genesis, Noah was 600 years old at the time of the flood, indicating that Noah was a demigod and therefore the offspring of Poseidon. After seven days, the flood waters subsided and Atlantis was forever lost beneath the sea. There is no possession more prized to the royal families of Europe than their genealogy charts. They treasure them above all else. The charts are their pedigree papers, which trace their royal bloodlines back to their divine roots. Over the millennia, the royal families have preserved the purity and divine powers of their bloodline by interbreeding exclusively within royal power circles. about royal family of England and the United Kingdom. One rumor that won't go away is that Queen Elizabeth II is an alien. She is thought to have type RH negative blood, which is believed to be the bloodline of the alien Anunnaki race. The March 18, 1985 issue of Time magazine confirmed that Prince Charles' blood type is, in fact, RH negative. Have you ever wondered why hemophilia is called a royal disease? The disease is caused by mixing the iron-based hemoglobin of humans with the copper-based blood of royals. Since the two don't mix, laws were introduced to ban marriages between royals and commoners. Everyone knows that copper turns bluish-green when it oxidizes, which is why the copper-based blood of royalty is rumored to be blue in color. One doesn't have to look far to find symbols of the divine worship and ancestry of the royal blue bloods. The British royal family's gold carriage features the giant-sized ancestral serpent god Poseidon riding on the back of it, adorned in gold and carrying a trident. It's no coincidence that the trident carried by the serpent god Poseidon is also carried by Satan. From the Sumerians, Hebrews, Greeks and other cultures, we learn that the gods created humans in their own image. The Hebrew god of the Bible is called Elohim, which means more than one god. He says, let us make man in our image after our likeness. What exactly is the image of the gods? In all of the ancient literature, the gods are described as having supernatural powers, advanced knowledge, and advanced technology. But what do we really know about their character? They are described with a dual nature, and their dark side is chilling. They are competitive, terrorizing, vengeful, punishing, power-hungry, egotistical, jealous, murderous, selfish, conniving, and bloodthirsty. And they are willing to sacrifice parents, children, siblings, and anything that moves for the throne of power. The Hebrew God of the Bible admits to being a jealous God, and warns humans that if they are foolish enough to put any other God before him, he will destroy them. He has a pathological need to be worshipped by humans through animal and even human sacrifice. In Numbers 25, he kills 24,000 of his people with a plague. He views humans who he created in his own image as evil, flawed, and sinful, and demands that they remain ignorant. His first commandment is, thou shalt not know. Finally, he seeks to destroy his sinful human creations in a flood that shows his ineptitude 
when they manage to survive. There is no reason whatsoever to doubt the truth of the ancient Sumerian records, which describe human-like gods living and walking. One of the most startling scientific discoveries from the Human Genome Project is that 250 of our 25,000 human genes have no evolutionary basis whatsoever. What that means is that 250 of our genes are not, I repeat not, shared with any other terrestrial life form. Did you know that 85% of all human beings have a monkey gene? The monkey gene is called the rhesus factor, or RH factor, because it can be traced to the rhesus monkey. Chances are your blood type tests RH positive, which means you've got the monkey gene. If by chance your blood type tests negative for the monkey gene, you are in a small minority of only 15% of the world's population. So what happens when an RH negative woman gets pregnant with an RH positive partner? Her body rejects, attacks, and kills the fetus. Unless, of course, there's medical intervention. What is the cause of this strange breeding incompatibility within the human species? Are RH negative people alien in some way? Studies were done to see if there's any difference between RH negative people and RH positive people. The results were shocking. RH negative people commonly have a higher than average IQ, sensitive vision, a lower body temperature, increased sensitivity to heat and sunlight, they can't receive blood transfusions from RH positive donors, they often have reddish hair and blue, green, or hazel eyes. Some even have an extra vertebrae or an extra stratum in their artwork as astronauts with space vehicles. It's easy to imagine our own astronauts someday encountering intelligent life forms in space who will view us as their gods. Many of the ancient texts talk of gods who came to Earth from the heavens and created man in their own image. The Egyptians, Phoenicians, Chaldeans, Mayans, Aztecs, Aryans, Assyrians, and the inhabitants of ancient India and Tibet have all recorded the arrival of gods from the heavens in their ancient writings. The best place to get answers about who these gods were is from the oldest known records written by the oldest known civilization. One of the most startling scientific discoveries from the Human Genome Project is that 250 of our 25,000 human genes have no evolutionary basis whatsoever. What that means is that 250 of our genes are not, I repeat not, shared with any other terrestrial life form. Did you know that 85% of all human beings have a monkey gene? The monkey gene is called the rhesus factor, or RH factor, because it can be traced to the rhesus monkey. Chances are your blood type tests RH positive, which means you've got the monkey gene. If by chance your blood type tests negative for the monkey gene, you are in a small minority of only 15% of the world's population. So what happens when an RH negative woman gets pregnant with an RH positive partner? Her body rejects, attacks, and kills the fetus, unless, of course, there's medical intervention. What is the cause of this strange breeding incompatibility within the human species? Are RH negative people alien in some way? Studies were done to see if there's any difference between RH negative people and RH positive people. The results were shocking. RH negative people commonly have a higher than average IQ, sensitive vision, a lower body temperature, increased sensitivity to heat and sunlight, they can't receive blood transfusions from RH positive donors, they often have reddish hair and blue, green, or hazel eyes. Some, the Sumerians, whose culture dates back to 6000 BC, the Sumerians documented the arrival of gods from another world who brought with them advanced knowledge. They called these gods the Anunnaki, which means those who from heaven to earth came. In the 1800s, Sumerian clay tablets were found in present-day Iraq. The tablets clearly identify the name of the god who genetically engineered the human race. His name was Enki, and he's the same god that the Greeks called Poseidon. His symbol was two entwined serpents, the entwined serpents are the double helix of human DNA. This same symbol is used by today's medical profession. Why on earth would the Sumerians and other ain't even have an extra vertebrae or an extra rib? Since RH negative blood hasn't followed the usual evolutionary path, it must have been introduced from some outside source. Two celebrated authors, Eric von Daniken and Zachariah Stitchin, have uncovered convincing evidence that the outside source was ancient astronauts who genetically engineered the human race. According to Van Daniken, the proof lies in the breathtaking megaliths 
that were developed either by extraterrestrial visitors or by humans who had been taught the advanced scientific knowledge needed to build them. Such artifacts include Stonehenge, the head statues of Easter Island, and the Egyptian pyramids and obelisks. Why did so many ancient cultures with no way of communicating with each other worship these so-called gods and 